I'm a 19-year-old male. My mom is getting remarried, her new husband is very conservative, and so is his side of the family. My mom is Asian, Japanese. My dad is Caucasian, American. My new stepfather is also Asian, Japanese. I'm sharing this information because I think culture is part of why there is an issue. I have a tattoo on the front of my hand. It doesn't take up the entire hand. It's not text on knuckles or anything someone would consider offensive. It's done cleanly in black ink, and I personally don't think it would be distracting in person or in photos. My tattoo means a lot to me. I have no other tattoos. When my mom started seeing her new partner, she changed a lot. They have been dating for a little over a year. The second time I met my stepdad, he wanted to speak with me alone. This is when he told me that he and my mom will be moving to Japan where his kids live. In an indirect kind of way, he let me know that I won't be part of this picture. It was the first time I learned about the move. My stepfather has two kids from different marriages. My mom will be his third wife. He has a son, 27-year-old male, and a daughter, 20-year-old female. I have met them both only once. The son hated me, no idea why. I didn't bother trying to change his mind. The daughter was kind. She tries to keep in touch with me over text sometimes. At my stepfather's request, my mom has changed her entire appearance and wardrobe. He even selects her perfume. Sometimes it feels like the mom I know disappears in his presence and some other lady takes her place. She talks to him in this overly polite customer service voice. Even the way she speaks Japanese sounds different from how she speaks with me. My stepfather is harsh with me in private, but acts overly friendly in front of my mom. He's pulled me aside countless times to call me out for disrespecting him in some specific way he took offense to that no one else would. I don't care. I am not intimidated by it, but I understand. How my mom is perceived by him is important to her, and I feel frustrated. I'm not good at expressing these things, but I've tried to tell her. My mom has told me I need to cover my tattoo for the wedding and for the duration of the time we receive guests. Would I be the jerk if I don't comply? I don't want to look back and regret that I was so cowardly I put makeup on my hand just to appease my jerk stepfather. I'm not going to be flashing my tattoo to people, and I'm not interested in drawing attention to myself. I don't see why I have to alter myself to fit his image. I will be walking my mom down the aisle, though. Please help me decide. Thank you for reading this. Now for a few comments before the update, comment one. I would refuse to talk in private with him anymore. Let him know you're more comfortable talking where you are at. And maybe record him if that doesn't work so you have the proof you need. Also, get lunch with your mom prior to the wedding. Just you and her. Ask her how you feel about the wedding, about moving to Japan. Maybe comment on how she's changed and what things you liked about the old her that she might want to remember or recreate now if she felt free to. Listen, try not to show too much how much you hate your stepdad and end with a reminder that you'll always be there for her, whatever happens. Maybe make a joke about how if he doesn't treat her right, that you will. Only if you think you can get away with it. Basically, I think your mom is too deep into an hurtful relationship. It's doubtful that she'd end things now, but if possible, it would be good to be a lifeline for your mom and subtly help her come around to her situation and for her to know that you're there to help her leave when she's ready to. Comment two. It doesn't take up the entire hand. It's not text on knuckles or anything someone would consider offensive. It's done cleanly in black ink, and I personally don't think it would be distracting in person or in photos. I mean, no offense when I say this, but none of these details matter in the slightest. If you had a tattoo that covered not only your whole hand, but your whole arm and shoulder and the words big butt tattoo were scrawled across your knuckles in red ink, it would not matter in the slightest. Dad bod would still be well out of line, and you would still be 100% in the right. I can understand the urge to sublimate yourself for your mom's benefit, but consider also that sticking to your guns may ultimately be more to her benefit. She will know that she can come to you when the time comes. Not the idiot and it's not close. Stay true to yourself for you and for her. Now for the update. Thank you for coming back to hear more about what's been going on. So the wedding happened and it was a mess. I didn't cover my tattoo. My stepdad was furious and my mom was caught in the middle. She looked at me with this mix of disappointment and sadness. It was like she was saying, why can't you just do this one thing for me? But I just couldn't. The tattoo is part of who I am, 
and I felt like covering it up was like saying it was something to be ashamed of. After the wedding, things got worse. My stepdad's family wouldn't stop talking about the disrespectful American son with the tattoo. They said it was a bad omen or something. My stepdad's son, the one who hated me, he started spreading rumors about me, saying I was a troublemaker, that I had a criminal record, which is totally not true. I guess he just wanted to make me look bad. My mom's been trying to smooth things over, but it's not working. She's been so stressed and I can tell she's not happy. She's always been the kind of person who avoids conflict, and now she's right in the middle of it. I feel bad for her, but I also feel angry that she's letting my stepdad and his family walk all over her. The worst part is my stepdad gave my mom an ultimatum. He said it was either him and his family or me. Can you believe that? My mom was torn, but in the end, she chose him. She's moving to Japan with him and I'm not invited. She says it's for the best, that it'll give me a chance to be independent. But I know it's because of the tattoo and all the drama. I've been staying with a friend since the wedding. I can't stand being in that house anymore, knowing that I'm not wanted there. It's been tough, trying to figure out what to do next. I've been looking for a job, but it's not easy with everything that's happened. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, my mom's new husband did something that completely shocked me. He sent me a letter, saying he'd pay for me to get the tattoo removed. He said it was his way of trying to mend fences, but it felt like a slap in the face, like he was trying to erase a part of me just to make his life easier. I didn't take his money. Instead, I got a job at a local garage. The owner doesn't care about tattoos, and he's been really supportive. It's hard work, but it feels good to be doing something on my own terms. My mom's been calling, trying to patch things up. She says she misses me, that she's sorry for how everything turned out. But I can't just forget what happened. It's like there's this huge gap between us now, and I don't know if it can ever be bridged. So that's where things stand. I'm working, trying to save up some money, maybe go to college one day. But my relationship with my mom is pretty much non-existent, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Thanks for reading this. My coworker uses her daughter's disability to manipulate me at work. So I record her threats and show them to HR, getting her fired and banned from school events. My daughter has been friends with the daughter of a coworker of mine since pre-nursery. They were in the same playgroup, same nursery, and are now in the same primary school. This girl has developmental issues and can't interact with others her age. She clings to my daughter and won't let her play with other children. She has bitten and thrown things at my daughter in the past when she doesn't get her full attention. The school is trying to set up a plan for her, but in the meantime, she has to attend regular school with no assistant to give her the help she needs, as the previous assistant left. My coworker lives on the same street as me and is in a senior role. That is why I have gently tried to make excuses for her daughter to not come to our place. I have outright lied on a few occasions saying my daughter is ill, and I found out yesterday she has kept a log of all the times I have refused to have her daughter over at my place. She came by knocking on my letterbox to drop her off for a few hours, as she had heard from her daughter that my daughter was having a get-together with her friends. I tried to nicely deny that, telling her my daughter was feeling poorly, but she actually pulled a log saying she knew which girls had entered my home and to let her daughter in. I was mad at her, so I locked her out and told her they wouldn't be playing anymore. She was talking through the letterbox, demanding to know why I wouldn't let her play with her best friend. I told her I understood her desperation, but that due to past incidents, I thought it no longer safe for them to share the same space, and that I would let the school know that I was not okay with them always pairing them up on projects, as my daughter has always been the nice girl and done what the teachers have told her and made their lives easier by doing their work for them. I understand she was angry and perhaps exhausted. Caregiver exhaustion is a real thing, but I felt in that moment that watching her a few times a week for years and making my underage daughter her caretaker to be highly unfair. My coworker has two adult children that live close by, and she has children that are older than this girl from her second husband she lives with. Why can't she arrange between them or find her a support group? To this, she made a masked threat that she is good friends with my senior manager. I told her to get out of my front garden and that my daughter wasn't her maid. I do regret it a little as this girl has no other friends. The days my daughter is not in school due to actual illness, she has no one to play with. 
And often, after illness or other absence, her teachers have told her that they are glad she is back to play with this girl. It's a weird situation to be in. TA now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Document everything that happened, how she's kept a log, what the frick she is off the rails, her threat, and send it to HR to cover your butt. Make sure you include everything you can think of, keeping it black and white and professional, AKA not emotional. As for the school, call and tell them exactly what you told her. It's not fair to your daughter that she's been bullied into this position at all. She must dread seeing this other girl at this point. Comment two, is anyone other than me super concerned that this woman was apparently staking out OP's house, watching who comes and goes and keeping a written log? Is she stalking social media too? OP, you need to speak to the school and tell them that the parent has escalated things to almost a stalking stage and that they need to take this seriously or you will go over their heads to the superintendent if necessary. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So after the whole letterbox showdown, things went from bad to worse. My coworker, let's call her Karen because, well, she acts like one, decided to take things up a notch. She went behind my back and told everyone at work that I was the one being unreasonable and that I had been mean to her daughter. The nerve, right? And if that wasn't enough, she somehow convinced my boss to give me the worst shifts possible. I'm talking about the kind of hours that would make a vampire wince. But wait, it gets better. Karen's older kids, who are usually too busy to even look her way, suddenly became super involved. They started showing up at my house, trying to guilt trip me into letting their sister hang out with my daughter. They said things like, you don't understand how hard it is for her and she just needs a friend. I mean, I get it, but why is it my kid's responsibility? Now, here's where it gets really juicy. My daughter's teacher, who's always been super supportive, pulled me aside one day. She told me that Karen had been spreading rumors about me at the school, saying I was an unfit parent because I wouldn't let my daughter be friends with hers. Can you believe that? The teacher, thankfully, didn't buy it and actually apologized for always pairing them up for projects. She admitted they had been taking the easy way out by relying on my daughter's kindness. But the real kicker came when I found out that Karen had been using her senior role to access my personal files at work. She knew when I took days off, my performance reviews, everything. She was using this info to manipulate situations in her favor, like knowing exactly when to drop her daughter off at my place. I was fuming, but what could I do? She had the upper hand at work, and now it seemed like she was trying to control my personal life too. I felt trapped. Then, one day, my daughter came home from school with a bruise on her arm. She said Karen's daughter had gotten upset and lashed out at her. That was the last straw. I went straight to the school and demanded they do something about it. They finally agreed to put more support in place for Karen's daughter and to keep her away from mine. You'd think that would be the end of it, right? Wrong. Karen's reaction was to play the victim. She cried in front of our coworkers, saying how I was trying to isolate her daughter and how cruel I was. And people believed her. It was like I was the villain in some twisted soap opera. But here's the thing. Despite all this, I didn't leave my job or move away. I know, I know you're probably screaming at me to get out of this toxic situation, but it's not that simple. I need this job, and moving isn't an option right now. Plus, I keep thinking about Karen's daughter. She's just a kid, after all, and none of this is her fault. So I'm still here dealing with Karen's manipulations and trying to protect my daughter as best I can. It's a mess, but for now, it's my mess, and I'm handling it one day at a time. Thanks for reading. My dad assumes he'll walk me down the aisle, but after years of absence, I choose my stepdad and grandfather and when he makes a scene, I make sure his public humiliation goes viral. I, 24-year-old, am marrying my fiance, 25-year-old man, in a couple of months and almost everything is set and planned. I've had minimal problems with people involved in my wedding. It's not going to be a big wedding. My fiance and I agreed from the beginning of the wedding planning that we would only have close family and close friends at our wedding. The only exception is my fiancé's close friend bringing a plus one since he will be traveling from out of state to be there. My fiancé and I are paying for everything, so no one has a problem with our decisions. 
The only real issue that has come up is when talking about who will be walking me down the aisle. My biological father assumed he would be the one to walk me down the aisle. He made his point clear the first time it came up on social media when talking about my wedding. After he said this, I called him to let him know that my stepdad and pop, my grandfather from my mom's side, would be the ones walking me down the aisle, since they have been my father figures. My biological father didn't like that. He said that it was his right as my father to walk me down the aisle. In response, I said, just because you're my biological father doesn't mean you have the right to do anything. You've never been a father to me, so why should you have the privilege to walk me down the aisle at my wedding? He was silent after that. A moment of silence passed before I hung up. For context, my biological father was barely ever around during my entire childhood and was very emotionally disconnected from me. He and my mom got divorced when I was five, and since I was 14, I've hated him for never being a father to me. My pop was my father figure my whole life until my mom got remarried when I was 13, and he's been my real father ever since. He put in the effort into a relationship with me that my biological father never did. To be honest, the only reason he was invited to my wedding at all is because my brothers really wanted him to come for whatever reason. My family soon became aware of the situation. Most of the family on my side, but my brothers are saying that I should let my biological father be the one to walk me down the aisle since that's how it usually works with weddings. I don't get why my brothers are insisting on this, but now they're saying they won't come if I won't let my biological father be the one to walk me down the aisle. They're even saying that I'm an AH for taking this special moment away from my father, but he's not really a father to me, and I feel that this privilege should be for my actual father figures, so am I the AH for telling my biological father I don't want him to walk me down the aisle? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot, that's how it usually works at weddings, but not your wedding. Your wedding day. Your decision on who you want to walk you down the aisle. Your brothers have no say, and if they keep bringing it up, tell them they're welcome to have the sperm donor walk them down to the altar, or they can be uninvited to the wedding. Comment 2. Ask your brothers why you would have a man who basically abandoned you walk you down the aisle. If they can't get that through their thick skulls, perhaps it's like father-like sons, and you're better off without them too. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So, things went from bad to worse. My brothers, they've been on my back about the whole walking down the aisle thing. They've been talking to my biological father behind my back, filling his head with ideas that he's being wronged. And guess what? He shows up at my place unannounced, making a scene, demanding a family meeting to discuss the wedding. It was embarrassing, neighbors poking their heads out, and there I was, trying to calm down a man who's more stranger than father to me. My fiancé, bless him, tried to mediate, but my biological father wasn't having any of it. He gave me an ultimatum let him walk me down the aisle, or he'd pull some strings to mess up our venue booking. Turns out he's golf buddies with the owner of the place we're getting married at. Can you believe that? I was fuming, but I kept my cool. I told him we'd think about it and managed to get him to leave. Now my stepdad, he's a quiet man, but when he heard about this, he was ready to go to war for me. He said we'd find another venue if we had to, that I shouldn't be bullied into anything. My pop, he's old school, said he'd talk some sense into my brothers, make them see they were backing the wrong horse. But here's where it gets crazier. My best friend, who's like a sister to me, she works at the local paper. She caught wind of the drama and, without telling me, wrote up this piece about family dynamics and wedding pressures. Not naming names, but it was clear as day who it was about. The article went viral in our small town. Suddenly, everyone's talking about it taking sides and my weddings turning into this public spectacle. The venue owner, the one who's friends with my biological father, he gets wind of the article and calls me up. He's all apologies, saying he had no idea about the family drama and that our booking is safe. He even offered a discount to smooth things over. I guess he didn't want the bad press. So we're back on track, but the tension in the family is thick. My brothers, they're ashamed now that the whole town's gossiping about it. They've agreed to come to the wedding. No more threats, but things are still frosty. 
The day before the wedding, my biological father shows up again. This time, he's calmer, says he's been doing some thinking. He tells me he won't cause any more trouble and that he just wants to be there, even if it's not in the role he wanted. I'm wary, but I can see he's trying in his own messed up way. The wedding day arrives and it's beautiful, everything we wanted. My stepdad and pop walk me down the aisle and there's not a dry eye in the place. My biological father, he's there in the back, keeping a low profile. I catch his eye during the ceremony and there's this nod this moment of understanding, maybe. It's not forgiveness, not by a long shot, but it's something. After the ceremony, my brothers come up to me. They're sorry, they say. They got caught up in tradition, in the idea of what a father should be, rather than seeing what was right in front of them all along. We hug it out, but it's going to take time to really mend those bridges. And just when I think we can breathe easy, the reception throws us another curveball. My best friend, the one who wrote the article, She's been acting weird all night. Then, out of nowhere, she grabs the mic and spills her guts, confessing her love for my fiancé. The room goes silent. My fiancé, he's stunned, but he handles it like a champ. He tells her he's flattered, but he's in love with me, and that's that. She runs out and the party goes on, but it's a bittersweet note in an otherwise perfect day. So, there you have it. A week of my life that's been more soap opera than reality. But through it all, I stood my ground. And somehow, things worked out. I married the love of my life, and we did it our way despite the odds. Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day!